come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie talk show podcast, kind of like a movie book club that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. In our quest for total world domination, all you got to do to help us out in that task is go over to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you who are into the same crazy stuff that we are. These are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watch a it. movie you theft. Did it. Good job. The order is mixed up and everything, and I did it. Good yeah. job. So proud of you myself. know your name. <laughs> I'm glad you have a strong sense of self. Uh, yes. uh, so we watch a movie that was chosen by Kayla. What do we watch tonight? We watched Cowboys and Aliens. Mm, directed by John Favreau. The John the Favreau. John. Favreau. Oh, is he the John now? Favreau? Uh, we he the like, John we Favreau? historically I'm, like him on this, this is show. Very yes. True. Yes. This is yes. very true. Okay. See our end Favreau. of the year wrap ups for gushing about him in the Mandalorian. Yeah, so. for real. Mm-hmm. It's very true. What year was this? 2011. 10 mm-hmm. years. 10, Ten years, years old. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, 10 years. 10 year yeah. retrospective of yeah. Cowboys, Cowboys and Aliens. And aliens. Right. This was the first movie that he had done after Iron Man. Iron Man right. 2. Iron Man 2. Oh, okay. Oh, so so he was right. not yeah. on a good streak, is what you're saying. What was I'm going to argue with you on that because okay. I think Iron Man 3 is a worse movie than Iron Man 2. I mean, that is. Yeah. Absolutely true. Yeah. I'd rather watch Iron Man 2 than yeah, Iron Man I would 3. Agree. Very true. Yeah. He had yeah. done uh, Swingers, obviously. It was the yep. movie that he mm-hmm. broke on. He's in it and directed yep. it, right? Yeah. Elf. And he directed Elf. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know he did Chef, but that was after this, yeah. I think, right? Yeah. So oh, yeah. it was like yeah. his lower was indie movies. Well after, yeah. yeah. Zathura, right? Oh, he God, did, I forgot about that Zathura. movie. Yeah. Uh, well, that was uh, that was like, okay, well, I guess Elf and Zathura was kind of his launch up into the big leagues. Mm-hmm. And then Iron Man was the one that kind of cemented him as like, yes. he's the go-to guy. Now he is in charge of, uh, you know, the Star Wars universe yeah. for all intents and purposes. Well, and the Disney universe to some extent, too. He did that yeah. live action Jungle Book. He did the live action Lion King. Yeah. Yeah. I think he he's doing that King. Jungle Book mm-hmm. sequel, that Mowgli movie. I think he's doing that, too. So, like, he's he's Disney's workman, I guess. I was like, going to ask you, but this is probably not true. The, uh, the Jungle Book movie was not the first of the Disney, like, live action things, or was it? No, I think that was the first, like... I mean, because if you go all the way back, there's that that uh, 101 Dalmatians with Glenn Close from 2000, right. Right, whatever, yeah. you know, yeah. whether the 90, 96, maybe yeah, that was early one. Yeah. Of, hey, yeah, we should remake yeah. all of our cartoons. But his was like the first that started pioneering that like real life animals mm-hmm. yeah. th- sort of thing. You know, yeah. it was like we nailed it. Finally, like photorealistic yeah. animal Great. characters. No yeah. emotions on these animals at <laughs> <Yeah>. all. <laughs> Now we can't even use real animals in movies like uh, Call of the Wild, which starred somebody who's in this movie, yeah. where it's Oof. like, nope, we just use CGI dogs. Well, to be fair. so good in the Jungle Book and the Lion But that dog has to do so many things in that movie a dog cannot do in reality. You don't make so... that goddamn movie. That's what yeah. you do. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so uh, so this is, okay, so I, 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 I confess that I am not familiar with the source material mm-hmm. for this movie. What At the beginning, it said, like, something studios, uh, they're, you know, cowboys and aliens yeah this is a graphic novel okay. i think it's a one shot so it's just like the one novel uh, i think it came out like early 2000s late 90s um just just called cowboys and aliens i haven't read it i don't know how faithful this is but it's a good title but it's a great it's is a great it? title yes I think it's a because good it's title. a play on cowboys and indians yeah well, yeah so it's and a great title yeah okay i'm gonna uh, say maybe that. it's the most maybe it's an obvious title but i still think it's but like it delivered that that there movie were no is about cowboys in this movie how do you define a cowboy? Someone who Someone literally is, steers cattle? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to watch a movie about people steering cattle, right. Colin? But <laughs> there was people steering cattle. I was like, cattle, Harrison though. Ford is a cattle rancher. He's a cattle yeah. rancher. He's yeah, a cowboy. Yeah, uh, yeah cows okay. have to steer. I'm going to say I was like, that. what are you talking about? But Michaela chose this movie because this was a colossal bomb in the year that came out. That's not true. It was either. a colossal. It was a bomb, but it was not colossal. So what were our numbers? Uh, you guys want to take a guess? Ooh, budget. Um, budget. Let's guess your budget first. One hundred fifty million dollar budget. Mm-hmm. I was going to go one hundred thirty three million. Mm-hmm. Specific. <laughs> Holly, what do you think? <laughs> All right, um, one hundred twenty. Okay. Mm-hmm. Any guesses to how what hard it, it bombed? I'm going to one hundred one million. Ooh, I'm going to guess eighty five million. Ninety million. All right, so its budget was one hundred sixty three million. Ouch! Woo! Holy In twenty eleven, which like we weren't <sighs> making. Woo! This yeah, is Jesus. before the Marvel machine, so we're Oof. not making like this many movies a year that are made. Yeah. And it did 174. 
Ooh, so it okay. did. It was not a profitable movie. Well, yeah, yeah, but still, I mean, a movie that made 174 million dollars on a 163 I know, budget. Yeah, on a budget that's like a deficit. But like you still say, like, well, then it, that means a lot of people saw it. Yeah, yeah but true. but Colin, we expect movies to make half a billion dollars now. Yeah, so this is true. a failure. Well, otherwise, why yeah. put it? In, why put it in the theater? Colin? Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Make it half a yeah. billion dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ugh, now I'm depressed. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so angry. <laughs> well, and just to give you guys some perspective, because I was like, when I was doing my research, I was kind of shocked by how diverse and adult the box office was in 2011. Um, it it's shocking. I'll just name <laughs> off some movies that came out in 2011. Okay. Cabin in the Woods. All right. Drive. The Girl okay. with the Dragon Tattoo. Previous freak show episode in time and Scream right. Four, wow. Wow. <laughs> Final Destination Five, Super Eight, Contagion, Source Code, Your Next, The Gray, The Adjustment Bureau. These are all like These adult are, movies. All, yeah, it is. They're not great. No, but they tried. They tried. We okay, don't get man. movies like this now. Some of them I, I like. Well, yeah. yeah. Like they, but most of these are like not existing. Pro- like some of these are ex- existing properties, but it's not like. It's not a movie to set up another movie in a franchise. Right. It's not a movie that's like the fifth in a sequel, you know, like it's uh, there's a lot of original ideas in, th- in this year. And there's a lot of like lesser known properties like who knows the Adjustment Bureau? Who's read that Philip K. Dick short story? I was gonna say, I Most have people not. have not. Movie, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But like so at least they're cherry picking things that aren't very well known to adapt. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, wow, that was 10 years ago. I would give anything to have a box office like that now. Yeah. Like depressing <laughs> it, is, it is depressing yeah. i mean just drive and the girl with the dragon tattoo in the same year yeah, alone yeah, wow what yeah. a great year for movies yeah. you know yeah. um well okay so it's a because it, i was wondering if it was based on a card game but it's or something it like that a but graphic it's, a, it's a graphic novel okay, card game. okay. Mm-hmm. yeah because wasn't mars attacks like we're not card game but mars attacks was like cards trading cards or something like that they mm-hmm. made uh yeah because they had like kind of a Did story come first yeah, yeah. Then yeah. there was a movie, mm-hmm. um, just like the Garbage Pail Kids movie. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> yes. There's, uh, I guess, I, I was saying the the title seems weird to me because it's like the tone of the movie is very different than what the title and it, it, you know makes you expect. It's cowboys and aliens, and I, it just sounds like it's a goofy fun time with like it's gonna be funny or something. I, you, know? you would hope it would be funny. I mean, I can see that, but at the same time, to me, like it just when I hear it, I first think of that like a play on cowboys and Indians and those movies are serious. So I guess I kind of assume mm-hmm. it's like, I assume it's just a meshing of sci-fi and Western. I don't assume it's okay. going to be like, yeah, a, that's, like yeah. a sci-fi channel movie. Or okay. Anything. Yeah, that's what I get. Yeah. There that's maybe even closer. That's mm-hmm. what it seems like. Maybe audiences thought when they didn't turn out in, you know, right. Two point billion, $2. Yeah. $2. $2. <laughs> billion uh, grosses. Um, okay. So, uh, Who's in this movie? <laughs> Who is not in this movie is a shorter <laughs> list. Holy shit. Daniel Craig, the Harrison Ford. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Second build. Yeah. Paul Dano. Sam Rockwell. Clancy Olivia Brown. Wilde. Clancy Brown. Olivia Wilde. Olivia Wilde. Adam Beach. Uh, Walt Goggins. Walton Walt Goggins. Goggins. Uh, Keith Carradine. And I know we're missing like five more because <laughs> yeah. there's so many people in this movie. Yeah. I can't remember the guy's name from Braveheart. who shows up for one scene. The mm-hmm. Scottish guy with... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Every time I see him, I remember the scene in The Departed. The Departed. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mom, I'm not going to be able to make it home yeah. for yep. supper. Yeah. Okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that. French? Was he French in that? I th- uh, no, French was, uh, what's what? his name? Ray oh, Winstone. Ray yeah, Winstone yeah, yeah, was French. Yeah, yeah. He w- oh, yeah what was his name? Was I don't remember his name. Anyway. Well, this has like a whole bu- a galaxy of top name people in front of the camera and behind the camera. I think mm-hmm. how many how many screenwriters are there on this oh. movie? Was Robert Orsi in there? Yes. I think uh, Alex God, Kurtman. Alex Kurtman oh. and Damon Lindelof too. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, only man. only six screenwriters, Colin. Only six. Only six. <laughs> only six. Six screenwriters on your movie. For a movie know? where the simple concept of aliens, <laughs> of cowboys and aliens. You need six people, to and that makes that you wonder, like, you know, what was the source material that they each had to take a crack at this to try and make well, it the future? This is something that was like in and out of production hell for a very long time before it actually got made. Like, when was the book published? Uh, early two thousands, I think. Okay. But I guess the original, like, I guess Spielberg initially kicked the idea around in ninety seven. He mm. wanted to do a sci fi western crossover, and so like it's been something that's been kind of passed around since ninety seven, sure. technically. So, say, we've got John Favreau, but we've got Spielberg tied to this, Ron Howard tied to this. Yeah, so there's a lot and of Brian people, Grazer, of course, because they come together. To this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I thought at one point I heard that uh, either Spielberg 
I don't know if he was considering directed. I think like everything that Spielberg produces is something that at some point he mm. considers is right. like, you know, it comes through him and he's like, I'm holding on to that. Yeah. You know, maybe oh, I'll do yeah. it. And then he thinks about it, thinks about it. Something else catches his eye and he's like, okay, right. I'm going to do West Side yeah. Story instead or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But- <laughs> Which actually from the trailer, it looks pretty good. It does. His West Side Story looks pretty it good. It does look pretty good, actually. Yeah. Yeah. But this is that time period where it's like, exhausting that everything Spielberg comes out with has something to do with aliens. I was going to say hot. I don't know if this is a hot take or not. If he directed this movie, I think it'd be worse. Yeah. I think it'd be worse because this 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 period of Spielberg, especially oof. Yeah. This is the same year as War Horse. Oh yeah. Spielberg's (laughs) The minority report era. Right? This is that? way later than that. Way that later. was like 2007, right? Oh, okay. All right. This is War Horse, War Horse came out the same year as this Ugh. movie. So this is the era, the sleepy old man phase of. Sorry, I can't yeah. direct Cowboys and Aliens. I have to go do War Horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most depressing sentence ever. Well, then yeah. I assume that, like, if Spielberg had first crack on it and passed, that Ron Howard had second crack at it you feel that old man sleepiness like, right <laughs> a younger guy should do this and now favreau he's got I- these iron man movies why don't we give it to him he's the next like uh how come jj abrams didn't make the movie because uh, he was doing super eight that came <laughs> yeah, out this right, year the same year another bad movie yeah, yeah. Well, super eight it was a, that was a disappointment disappointing very yeah. disappointing yeah because yeah, well i mean yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, just where it eventually yeah. goes by the end of it um okay so this movie right is like trying to mash up two tastes that taste great separately and put them together mm-hmm. yeah this is the high concept pitch cowboys it's Alien. the reese's Boom. cup yeah, yeah that's it right. yeah but it is gonna do a western like straight ahead serious fucking western which i guess i gotta say when i first walked into this movie i did not expect that it was going to be like no no we're making a western see yeah. i i did because i don't think harrison ford would do a tongue-in-cheek movie mm. right yeah so i i feel like my expectations going into the theater were in the right place because i was like he wouldn't do like a cheesy i, I think that's version. the misconception with harrison ford though i think he I think he has hungers. He? I think he hungers to do. But those has movies. he ever done that? He did a he did an interview on Conan O'Brien once where he uh, lamented the fact that he doesn't get to do an, enough goofy shit. And so I think he deep down he wants to do that goofy shit, but nobody will cast him for it because he seems mm-hmm. so grumpy and serious. I thought he, uh, you know, in this movie, I'm like, this guy's always wanted to do a western. But yeah. I guess we were saying like everybody in this cast seems to be like, you know, I oh, right. yeah, I, yeah. I feel just... like their love comes through on the screen like. Yeah. Like they are having a great time playing mm. in this sandbox. It feels like. Yeah. yeah. What was the uh, uh, the state of the western at this point? Because you know, I probably what dead gone. Well, no. the last I mean, they always float around. Like when was sure. three ten? That was two thousand seven. Three ten. The magic year. The magic year. Two thousand seven. Yeah. yeah, and then Jonah Hex is two thousand nine. Well, okay. <laughs> well, okay. Was, well, at least it's not two thousand seven. So. Yeah. Or no, maybe Jonah Hex is. Joan X is right around this time. The Lone Ranger lies in your future. Right. Okay, but that's, yeah. that's a big budget. That's another yeah. big budget. But it's like, a rough uh, time. <laughs> yeah. But um, Westerns don't come around a lot. So this was, we discussed. Big this was studio. Ev- right. This yeah. is everybody's like, I've always wanted to do a Western. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. they got all those people who said that and put mm-hmm. them in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it's like a straight ahead Western. I mean, like uh, Ford, him, you know, like seeing him in the, obviously you're putting him in a, in a cowboy hat instead of a, <laughs> in a, instead of a fedora. Right. But it's mm-hmm. like, he looks like he was born to play in westerns like you know if they would have done this years ago it's like you could almost see him in like the wild bunch yeah. or something like that <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like, what would that have been with harrison ford um i feel that way about everyone in this movie except olivia wilde like everyone feels perfectly but, cast and perfectly in this world except true her. but when you find out her character it, it makes, makes sense, sense. Right. it yeah. makes sense yeah 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 but like yeah. her her teeth are so white and everyone else's teeth are so gross yeah. and it's like Okay, but yeah, it does. It does She's make like, sense. I'm a pretty alien. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I took this body. Play, okay. <laughs> so this, so this uh, western sets up like uh, we're introduced to Daniel Craig in the movie. Right, mm-hmm. this is post Bond. He's already established as uh, he's got like at least two James Bond movies under his yeah. belt at this point. Um, and so he wakes up in the middle of the desert, doesn't know who he is, and he's got some kind of alien gadget on his a bracelet on his wrist mm-hmm. that's that's your starting point mm-hmm. go right mm-hmm. yeah and then he uh is uh apprehended no he sorry he wanders into a town the no nearby he's town. no he wakes up and the the three guys descend on him yes, and right. take him hostage into absolution absolution new mexico did they yep. take him in there i thought he killed all them and then he rode in by oh, yeah that's right yeah that's right yeah it's like yeah that almost doesn't matter yeah <laughs> the plot. he gets like, to town that's what's important to yeah. it doesn't matter but it was a good opening it was a good, it opening. Was very yeah. good opening because he has like james bond level fighting skills yeah, yeah. Like, how does this guy have james bond level fighting skills stay tuned yeah. Right, yeah right i mean it's a perfect way to enter the movie also again it goes with the pitch of this so like all right 
picture it. A Western landscape. Mm -hmm. Roam around. And then all of a sudden, Daniel Craig pops up. It's like, like, I'm in. Uh, So in the town, we're introduced to like the uh, colorful residents of the town. This is, of course, like any Western town. Mm -hmm. I love the names of Western towns. Absolution. Absolution. Contention. Mm -hmm. I love Western town names. (laughs) Like I say, we're looking for absolution or we're headed to absolution. No, that's the name of the town. I know, but I thought the play on words. Uh, Uh, We're so goddamn (laughs) desperate in the West. They're like, absolution. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) down something to look forward to um well we're introduced to so who who do we meet in this town who are the residents of uh absolution new mexico new mexico yeah because they keep talking about going to santa fe yeah right and how they said it was all mexico at one point Mm -hmm. Mm paul dano was in this paul paul dano being a town sniveling shithead as always perfectly he does that very well he does he He is so, he makes himself so punchable. My God. He like, really he doesn't does. have a naturally punchable face, but he can make his, himself mm-hmm. punchable. Very like, punchable. Yeah. Um, he is Dollar Hyde, Harrison Ford's character's son. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so he can kind of, he just thinks he can do whatever the fuck. He treats it like Westworld. He goes around just like shooting things and dicking yeah. off, and he drinks for free in the bar. The bar is run by American treasurer Sam Rockwell. That's right. Who is Doc, the bartender? He's got Who's a nice mustache. A very bad day. Yeah, oh, is Doc. the worst day. <laughs> yeah. Well, this guy's out in the street, just like kapow, kapow. Yeah. Like, hey, and then he like he taxes, quote unquote, the uh, people because he's offended by Sam Rockwell. He goes around just like straight up robs everybody in yep. broad daylight. A menace, yeah. a fucking menace. But you're like, down. doesn't anybody else have a gun? He's the only guy with a gun, and that's why, like, you know, he's, he's able to, you know, I suppose he's, he's Dollar, dollar Hyde's son, son, so you so. can't, yeah. 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 Um, it's I like this, the kind of, they set up, uh, because we haven't met Dollar Hyde in the movie yet, but they kind of, they talk about him. I always love it when movies do this. When they talk about, I'm, you know who my dad is? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to go get my dad. Mm-hmm. You know, we haven't met the character yeah. yet. Right. So it kind of yeah. builds up that like, we're setting ooh. up for yeah. a big, a big <laughs> turn to camera reveal. Yep. Yeah. yeah. We're yeah. For. And the yeah. whole town is afraid of him though. The mm-hmm. whole town like lives in fear he of this He pretty much man. keeps it alive mm-hmm. at this point. So right. he can do whatever he wants mm-hmm. with his cattle business. It's the only reason the town's still there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they said it was originally like a, 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 a mining, mining town. town right? Yeah. Were they gold miners, silver miners, something I like that? I think they were remember. looking for it and they never found it. So it just yeah. kind of dried up. Yeah, because Dollar Hyde says, so there is gold here yeah. at one point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. That's right. So, mm-hmm. um, well, Craig is, uh, he enters town and then he has an altercation with Paul Dano uh, in the street where he basically shows this is a guy with a lot of big bluster and yes. not a lot behind it. And uh, that ends up with uh, uh, Paul Dano is going to go to jail. He's arrested by the sheriff. That's mm-hmm. Keith Carradine mm-hmm. in this movie. Another guy who like seems like he is born to be. Mm. In what, he's been in westerns before, but he's it's like, perfect. He yeah. belongs there. Yeah. <laughs> he belongs in westerns. Yes, yeah. yeah. because it feels effortless for him. Mm-hmm. It feels like this is just who he is. He doesn't yeah. have to act. Yeah. Like yeah, it's like, I totally buy like him. Sam anytime. Elliott. It yeah, just, yeah. He's just there, man. Yeah, he was born. Sam Elliott yeah. was born on a yeah. western side. He was just yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, right. Some of those guys just have it. You know, yep. and you're like, and like. Yeah, gr- yeah. Give the casting woman a bonus because she nailed it for this movie. Like yeah, top to did. bottom, nailed it. Yeah. Well, who's gonna say no when you're like, it's Harrison Ford? Yeah, the, the title sounds goofy, but it's Harrison Ford, and we're gonna make like a straight western, and everybody's like, Harrison Ford, Spielberg, Favreau, yeah. Ron Howard. Yeah, yeah like, you know, okay. it's like, funny. You say that to certain people, and they're like, oh, I'm getting excited. You say that to like other people, they're just like, uh, I don't know, it's not gonna end up very good. Who would say that? I would. What? Yeah, I, I'm if you were a working, no. done working Hollywood actor, you saying? No, if I was an actor, of course. That's, what, that's, oh, that's, that's what we're saying. saying. Yeah, that's okay. what we're saying. <laughs> like, if you're an actor, you're not going to be like, ew, Spielberg, <laughs> yeah. no. Like, no. What? Sean, what? Sold out. Sean, here, pretend I'm your agent real quick. All right, Sean, we have a, yes. scri- a script that's come in, okay? Um, I said yes. Now, the, title's, <laughs> the title's a little weird, but I'm I haven't sh- worked in two years. I said yes. But this I'm is my character I'm playing right now. <laughs> the title's a little weird, but I'm sure it's just a working title, okay? I'm sure they'll change it, you know, eventually. But it's, it's okay, it's called Cowboys and Aliens. Great title. Yep. <laughs> Great title. But get this. Favreau, Harrison Ford, Steven made... Spielberg, Ron Howard, and Brian Grazer. You in? <laughs> <laughs> What's it pay? <laughs> well, it's interesting that you, do like, <laughs> that you said that, that you wouldn't, you know, as not an actor, but just that you know, those names, like, don't They don't imply, excite me like, anymore. Yeah, really? It, so um, yeah, they don't excite me anymore. Yeah, so we're we're in the post. Uh, Spielberg is uh, has a magic hand and everything. I personally he think so. I would say that at out of all those names right now, I would say well, obviously Harrison Ford. He's an actor. I'm going to separate him. But like as far as the director, all that stuff. Yeah. Favreau excites me the most. Mm. Yes, yes, absolutely. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's on his way up. I yes. guess is what you kind of at this point. Um, mm-hmm. 
All right, so uh, the, uh, things eventually conspired to put uh, Daniel Craig also in the custody of the sheriff. He's a wanted man, Colin. Yeah. For a lot of shit. Right. <laughs> Which, But that's right? the thing. Like, Did we mention he wakes up and he has no memory? That's always a good place to start your movie. Remember. The character doesn't know who they are, so the movie's going to have to explain who they are. We'll find out at the same time. Can you be charged with mayhem? <laughs> yes. In Old West, you they can. could make up whatever they wanted, apparently. I All can't right. say how I know. <laughs> But yes, <laughs> yeah, this is. Uh, but I mean, basically, we're put setting up all, and then then we have to go summon uh, Dollar Hyde himself, right? Mm-hmm. Because the kids. So uh, because Paul Dano is going to be hauled off to Santa Fe, and Paul Dano is used to like, okay, maybe they'll lock me up for a night, but then they'll let me go the next day because they're afraid of my dad, and they're committing to it this time. They're like, nope, you're going to court in Santa Fe. We're going to load you up in the wagon with. Yeah, because he uh, shot Daniel a deputy. Craig. Yeah, like it's no joke this time. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. For no reason. No reason. Yeah, he's just I, careless with his gun. Yeah, and that's the thing where like Keith Carradine's character has that kind of like, well, you've crossed like it's a legal, ethical, and moral line at this point. And, like, I got to take him in, and you know, there's that kind yeah. of where you realize that Dollar Hyde does have more power <laughs> here yeah. than this than this sheriff. Mm-hmm. But the sheriff's like, uh, no, he shot a deputy. Yeah. He's got to go in. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know? Um, yeah, because if you undermine the law to that extent in that town, then it's just going to be fucking anarchy. You can't yeah. just like have, yeah, he can shoot a officer of the law with zero consequences. You mm-hmm. can't do that. Like, yeah. I mean, America could learn from that right now, yeah. but, but <laughs> dollar hide. Well, there's a, there's a separate thing. Okay. Well, there's a, a several things. First of all, uh, uh, Daniel Craig, we also know that he carries with him a, a photograph of a woman who he has vague flashbacks of, but sure. we don't know who she is. Mm-hmm. Um, He's apparently wanted for, we don't actually know at this point what he does, but we know that he has a list of offenses. Yes. Uh, Loner, Loggerman. Lonerman? Logger, Lonergan. Lonergan. Lonergan, thank Lonergan, you very yeah. much. <laughs> and uh, so he's taken into custody, and then we in, we are introduced to Dollar Hyde, but he has a problem that is setting up, like, I guess, where this movie is going to take us, and that's uh, his ranch hands are out mm-hmm. in the field looking after the cattle and all of a sudden big explosions of white light from the sky and everybody's vaporized i like that he thinks that the one surviving guy used dynamite to blow up his cattle what kind yeah. of man blows up another <laughs> man's cattle and yeah as he's standing next to half a cow in the but, if you think, yes. but like that's if you think about it how much money did he lose in that That'd like blew up like how much of his cattle Men, did he cattle. blow up yeah, yeah mm-hmm. let's and also oof. like this is the west so there's literally no other explanation right yeah they like, don't you have to assume that that's what happened because yeah, he says mm-hmm. there was no storm and no right you know, yeah no lightning yeah. yeah i think cattle goes for like 500 a head right now right I don't, anybody, know. Anybody? I don't keep I don't up know. on the cattle fuck prices. Is I know. I what are you talking my ranch about? In a few years? Yeah. 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 I bet you want to buy a cow and have a bunch of steaks and it'd be cheap. No, this is your I, life, okay. Colin. I live this alone. Why am I buying a cow? You're the one Googling sl- uh, <laughs> sides of beef to have in you your fridge. You know how rare I eat beef? I never eat beef. <laughs> We're saying that it's an expensive thing. If you yes. lose a cow, it's a yes. big And gift. back then, it was a matter of life and death. Like, this could have fucking Correct. done him in permanently, you yeah. know? Yeah, that's your livelihood, right? Mm. Um, so... Uh, so everybody's in place in the town. We've also got Clancy Brown is uh, in this movie. He plays a, uh, a, a pastor. A pastor. Well, because, who, of course, that's what Clancy Brown does now. That's right. <laughs> and he's also kind of like a doctor, even though the other guy's named Doc, mm-hmm. the bartender. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I feel like they both have those skills. Yeah, right. they, they both kind of. Do I their think thing. in the Old West, like, you, had to you have just have skills, to. Right? Yeah. yeah. I like the way that the bartender in the Old West has to have a little bit of like medical skills for all the people right. that are shot fights. up in the. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I mean, this just goes back to the days of a surgeon barber, you know? You yeah. Gotta have, you got to have a multi-trade. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, he the, the bartender just wants to live there to live his dream. Apparently putting his past behind him, he's there with his wife, and they're going to operate a bar. Holly, do you want to explain the worst day of Sam, <laughs> of, of, of Sam Rockwell's oh. life that we're watching happen in this oh, movie? Oh, poor sweet Sam Rockwell. I don't know if I do. I feel okay. so sad for him. <laughs> so he... He has Paul Dano giving him shit, beating right. him up in the middle of the street yeah. for no reason. And he's just like outside of his bar, just trying to like clean up the porch. And Yeah, he's like, just go do your shit somewhere else. Just don't do yeah, it in my leave, place of leave. business. It's bad enough that you don't pay. And, and then he's like, what? What is bad enough? What? Yeah. So so yeah. this poor guy is losing money on this menace to society coming mm-hmm. into his bar all the time. Mm-hmm. There's bar fights happening. He's carrying that whole tray of drinks that gets shot out of his hand yeah. from the second floor <laughs> at one point. He's got and- a violinist who's ineffectual and doesn't right. want to play yeah. that thing. Right. He just wants to serve to serve drinks and eventually his wife's taken. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
fucking hell. Mm -hmm. Worst day ever. That's right. By demons. As and, as, as demons. As and By he, demons. As the demons. And he can't shoot a gun. And he, he can't, can't shoot. shoot. Yeah. Man. He's the, got a he's got a rough uh, road ahead of him. Yeah. So, <laughs> so are we assuming that he was practicing medicine and now he's living his dream That's of being a bartender? Maybe. I don't know. Like, is that that's the, kind of the impression that I feels get? Like a downgrade from if you're like oh, uh, he wants a doctor. The, the, less, the adventure. I feel like it's a lot less stressful to own your own bar and all that. Stuff. Yeah, I'm I sure think, they were in need of doctors. I, yeah, <laughs> but that's but not I, what's in his soul. Yeah, I, I, I get the wants. sense he just wants to be left alone and live a quiet, normal maybe, life. Is maybe, the vibe yeah. I get from him. You know, like his nickname is. Yeah, in this case, he's just pouring drinks. He's not trying to save someone's life from a bullet. You know, like it's less stressful. This is a nice retirement plan. That's right. We also there's uh well Olivia Wilde is also introduced in this uh right. in this initial setup of all the characters and she is the mystery woman. She does right? a lot of staring. Yes. Yeah. She From seems to recognize Daniel Craig, mm -hmm. but he doesn't recognize her. And so there's like, okay, what's going on between the two mm -hmm. of them? But then she ends up clocking him over the head when he's about to get arrested because he's got these ninja skills that he can take down people with. We don't know why, but she clocks him and uh, Keith Carradine's able to arrest him. Mm -hmm. So with everybody then in their positions where like, okay, we're taking these two guys to Santa Fe, the marshal's going to, or the sheriff's going to go with mm -hmm. them. We're all saddling up, right? Dollar Hyde's on his way. Dollar Hyde comes in with like, uh, like either let my son go. I love or this I'm entrance. Take him. So torches. it's so badass. I love it. You just see the torches. You everything. just see the torches at first. And mm -hmm. even when they roll into town, like the other people behind him are lit up first before you see Harrison mm -hmm. Ford's face. I love it. Mm -hmm. And it's especially great because those lights are like the foreshadowing of what's about to come yeah. next. Yes. Yeah. It's Which really well good. done. Yes. Like, I actually really liked that. I know. I, this, yeah. this whole part of the movie, this like first 30, 40-ish minutes. Yeah, it's like act one. It is like a perfect little movie in itself. It is. Like, it is. You it's know? very strong. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. I mean, it set everything up. It feels like a real western. Right? Yeah. Like, okay. And then where's the other shoe going to drop? Because this goddamn title has promised me aliens, and, and there's so a bracelet get... on Daniel Craig's hand, yeah. right? So, which lights up all of a sudden. And that's beeps. How it works. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. Which like what? <laughs> Sam Rockwell should have been like, "What the fuck is that?" <laughs> like somebody, they should have been really freaked out by it. Well, but he was. It didn't light up until he was in the back of the wagon well, with right, Paul yeah. Dano. So no one else. Dano. It was just those two. So. See the assumption being that the thing is somehow triggered by it because you also get that shot of like it's a very Spielbergian thing where you get everybody looking toward the distance. We're looking at them as their like eyes go wide. Like what the hell are they looking at? Yeah. And you see it. And it does look oh, like Holly said it's yeah. like the fucking War of the World shot. Yeah, it's, it's the God Close it. Encounters of the Third Kind yeah, it shot. Is. It's the alien. So he's whatever. just ripping himself off. Yeah, you yes. see the lights. Oh, well, what are you gonna We're do? using oh, his own yeah. material. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sure. But it looks okay. I'll give him this. It looks good. Yeah, like, it I like it's this. effective. This is great. It's effective. It looks like more yeah. torches are coming, and right. it's the it's not but torches. It's, but it's got that too high up. Yeah, but it's also got that kind of almost. I guess kind of almost in that V shape that UFOs like what we know of UFOs. Well, cause, well when you first see it, it does look like a, like the same thing. It looks yeah. like a gathering of what mm -hmm. would probably riders coming towards them. And then as it gets like bigger or higher, or whatever is happening, then all of a sudden the formations you're like, whoa, that is not those aren't people. There's something like symmetrical about these lights. What the fuck is happening? Yeah. I think it's effective. Yeah, mm -hmm. I yeah. want this made me want like I want a uh, cool thriller with. A really down, more serious thriller with cowboys and aliens. I thought like you wanted a, a goofier movie. No, I want no, I want creepier. That was me. I he thought that it had a goofier. Well, no, I was expecting a goofier movie <laughs> yeah. with that title. No, I want a thriller where they're just like you don't we don't you know, you don't see full aliens in broad daylight where they're just sneaking around. I want signs in the West. That's what I want. <laughs> To, from your say, lips to M. Night Shyamalan's there ears, we go. Sean. That I'll take. <laughs> That'll take. There's a, have you ever seen a movie called The Burrowers? On no. uh, ironically, a Clancy Brown is also in <laughs> that. But okay, well, maybe. Um, so, so this is like our first big like scene. Alien ships descend. They have uh, like those right. concert laser lights. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they yeah. do. And they appear to be... It's like a Trans-Siberian Orchestra <laughs> yeah, performance. Yeah. And they're, they're lassoing... They are lassoing people. The residents right off but the street. But they're like grappling hooks. They're like, yeah, they're like yeah. grapplings. It's they crazy. They just grapple these people up into the, and they're swinging around. They're going through ceilings and shit. It's pretty brutal, yeah. honestly. Yeah. And it's pretty brazen, too, on the, the point of these aliens because... Uh, okay, so I have a question at this point in the movie that I wasn't quite clear on. Why are, these, why are they taking these people? Well, Olivia Wilde said they're studying you to find your weakness. Because they will send more back. 
Yeah. Yeah. They're because this is a scouting a of mission. In, yeah. Independence they, Day, but yeah. They want to dominate. This is a scouting yeah. mission, she said. Yeah. And what do all aliens? They come to find our weakness. That is yeah. the okay. MO ta- of aliens. They want to take over the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All well, right. and they just want, Every time. well, and we, as we find out later in this movie, they want to deplete our planet of gold and de- burn it to the ground and then move on to the next one. Right. That's what they do. That's yeah. what because it's a Western and goddammit, we're after gold. It's a gold rush. Yes. I'll give them credit for this. That's a good idea. And honestly, I loved the explanation. What do they want with it? It's as valuable to them as it is to you. Mm. That's all the explanation mm. you need. But my favorite Love was it. my favorite was Harrison Ford's line because it was exactly what I was thinking. He's like, "What are they going to do to buy something?" And I was like, "Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Harrison Ford." I was thinking the same thing. Well, that's uh, so big explosions and all that in this scene, and we end up like uh, since Paul Dano and some of the uh, the key figures, the sheriff, uh, Sam Rockwell's wife, are abducted by the aliens. Mm-hmm. Um, this means that the group is going to have to unite in one of the Western, uh, like, this is what you do in Western. You guys got to go out and get them and bring them back. Mm-hmm. This is, uh, you know, what, the searchers or uh, something. You know, they all do this. Yeah, I go get them. <laughs> right. right? Well, it's I, not Shane, which we determined was the Western story, right? Didn't we we okay. determined it's one of the only four stories in existence. Yeah, yeah. The right, searchers right, right. is one of the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Go find them and bring them back. The thing I really like about this, and I know this is what Favreau likes and why he really like feels like people kind of miss the point of this movie, is that it's kind of, you know, when when the first settlers came here and the native people saw them, it was like aliens landing. Mm-hmm. Because the technology advancement yeah, was yeah, so disparate. Yeah. Those, like metal, you know, plate uh, and metal, firearms. Yeah. Men like, yeah. In, dressed in silver that yes. you know, it's like yeah. Yeah, it had to be it, it that's what it was. But this is kind of flipping that and the cowboys are the ones with the arcane technology mm-hmm. that are mm-hmm. being invaded so right. i like that yeah, I, cause yeah i guess that was what kind of the, the to me personally my interest in the movie was around this scene and i think you know as i was watching it with you guys you were talking about it because uh sean and uh holly hadn't seen it before mm-hmm. and right. before yeah. correct but there's a lot of like, you know, what would these people think of flying, you know, right. <laughs> machines? Mm-hmm. Have they ever heard of terrifying? What would the, you can't call it a beep because you've never heard beep. What's that sound? Right. <laughs> you know, it's like, how it's does like this a, like. It's, it's a bell, but not a bell. Like, how would you even like, translate that? What does think... that relate to? Because you got to relate it to whatever you know in real life is the closest right, thing to right. that beep. How do you not have a mental breakdown seeing that stuff? You know, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Yeah. You well, know? I always assume that yeah, people like, probably I'm, I'm would go drink. Yeah. yeah. Well, I did like that they at least gave lip service by the fact that Clancy Brown was there. the The idea that they might perceive them as demons, because yes. I assume th- seen through that heavily religious lens of yes. that time period, you that's I the mean, first oh, yeah. thing that's that you go to because, because the Bible flew exists. from the yeah. sky. Well, yeah, and that honestly, that is a mindset that people still go by this day. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Everything is a miracle to some people. Yeah. It's not science. It's a miracle. Right. I know the Afghanis yeah. still believe that genies uh, live in atomic weapons. Yeah. Uh, so the oh, yeah. I'm sorry, there was one thing missing, Sean. You, you like you saying I'm going back inside, going to get drunk if I'm seeing the shit. Yeah. That was this the the clip that the reaction shot that was missing. We should have cut to the town drunk, like rubbing his eyes and being like, "What the fuck?" Like he's yeah. yeah. that yeah. Yes, yeah. that's what I want in this western. Yeah, where like, was that scene of that town drunk? drunk? Yeah. Actually, yeah, because where was it? If that would have been it's done in the, in, like, the 80s. Cut. That would have been there. Where oh was Buck Flowers when you needed? That's in the director's yes. cut. Where was Buck Flowers when you needed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Taking it back in the yeah. 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 Buck like Flowers, that. another face that's made to be in westerns. Yeah. I, I bet it's in that director's cut. That extra 15 minutes, I'm sure there's It'd a talent drunk. Surpri- I don't believe that there is the 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 extra 15 minutes because uh, we're talking about there was a theatrical, then later a, like 15 minute longer uh, extended version, but a lot of it has to do with dollar hide has an indian uh i think he's an apache i'm not sure if he's, he's an apache because the the natives that they came across were apache mm-hmm. okay that yeah. he has with him that he's kind of sort of adopted or taken under his wing this mm-hmm. is adam beach's character mm-hmm. he's a pretty he, he he's was, great yeah, he he's in, in everything uh, i love him the John oh, yeah. Yeah. Movie. Yeah. he's been in every clint eastwood movie like letter z wajima and all flags he's of our fathers mm-hmm. he's been in a ton of stuff <laughs> i like him yeah he's, he's great. a great actor but he, um, I forgot what my train of thought there was. Sorry, there was Adam uh, Beach. Uh, yeah, Harrison Ford. The, uh, the extra footage. That's right. The yeah. extra footage. Sorry, uh, is more more scenes playing with the dynamic between Dollar Hyde and uh, and his because I think that's like a subplot that the movie tries to develop yeah. is basically you got this Dollar Hyde has this asshole son, but then he has like 
his decent, you know, adopted. Like surrogate or, yeah. yeah. But it's like, will he ever recognize that, like, this guy is more mm-hmm. the son that he wanted than, right. Right. than the well, son that it's he's like, got? It's like he almost resents that he wasn't his actual son, so he kind of takes it out on him, and he doesn't, and he's, Sometimes like, abusive in a him. racial way. Yeah, it's he's like, really, right. dude, yeah. He's really, like, a verbally abusive to me. Yeah. 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 It's really sad. Yeah, but the kid, like, sees him as, like, you know, it's like. because wants I think, his approval yeah, so bad. There yeah. was a good scene where he has to talk to the Apache uh, leader that they run into later and mm-hmm. explain, like, why you should team up with this, uh, because I like that this is also a movie where, like, the cowboys and the Indians work together to fight the, right. yeah. the aliens. But you have that scene where he has to kind of explain, like, no, this guy is a, you know, he's a, a good man. And, yeah. you know, this and a is a great warrior. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you haven't seen him in battle. I have. It's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are like nice, like subplot character stuff that's going on yeah. there. But there was more of that. In Even the, though in he said extent. he lost three hundred twenty-eight men in a cornfield, he's a great, great warrior. Because well, he was a colonel, right? That yeah. was the th- he was right. Colonel yeah. Dollar Hyde. That's yeah. why, like, so were you great or were you not? Because it sounds like you didn't do too hot, dude. <laughs> mm. Well, but he blames that on like because mm-hmm. of Washington. Washington mm-hmm. like gave us the orders. The blah blah blah. If I would have done it, it would have been yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he's there's a lot of uh, grumpy dense old... movie. There's a lot happening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> grumpy old man, uh, 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 Ferris and Ford going on there. Um, okay, so you got our guy. Uh, all of our team is riding out uh, to go and track the alien, the alien that got away from the crashed ship. Yep, because they Daniel Craig was able to fire off some lasers with his bracelet mm. and hit the ship right this is one of those things that kind of works by thought you know somehow mm-hmm. it, it knows mm-hmm. when an alien is around so that's when it wakes up but then it actually fires off by you thinking about it maybe i'm not sure exactly mm-hmm. how that technology it's alien technology it's alien technology yeah, yeah. so the very first- very reminiscent of some things that we later see in uh, black panther and then also thor ragnarok right, right. Mm-hmm. but district, the- district nine too yeah but they have nanotechnology okay mm-hmm. uh so <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the, their first stop, uh, is oh, they many. find, right. Cause they, this is a video game. This is a video game. Not we have side quests. Yeah. <laughs> we have to have side quests. It's an okay. amazing is that, video game. I play the fuck out of this video game. That the, that movie plotting now has basically, uh, adopted the form of a video game adventure where. It does adopt the form of video game adventure. Mm-hmm. Not across the board, but yes, it does. Mm-hmm. But also it's, it's, uh, it's a circular thing because I mean, video games learned it all from movies to begin with. And video and so, games are more like movies now than right. video games. And so, so they've learned all that from movies. Now they're just making video, uh, movies that you can play. And that mm-hmm. also, and then that goes back to movies. They all right. feed into each other. And yeah. this is kind of where we end up with that. But if you can't like play it. it, I guess that's the thing. Cause our plot is saying, it's fucking right. Boring. Our, our plot is saying that, okay, the people have been abducted and we have to go and find them. So we need clues, obviously, to get there. And the through line is eventually we're going to find where the alien base is, right? Yes. And we're going to be able to find our people. So to get there, it's almost like that's the next logical step that you want to get to in your in your movie. Yeah. Uh, so we're going we're gonna... to... And then figure out how to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Instead, instead of going from like here to here... Oh, we're gonna put well, a bunch of stuff you, in here. I guess that's but that's the thing you expect, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna write this thing out, it's like it has to you have to go on an adventure. And in order mm-hmm. for there to be an adventure, there has to be a lot of detours and all that stuff. But like I don't know. Yeah, it turns I mean, into a road movie. Yeah. Yeah. So the first stop is uh But they, you have to do that to develop your characters, right? Like that because a second ago they hated each other. Right. Yeah. They have to like like each other throughout they have yeah. to, well, they yeah. have to connect they have to yes. connect throughout the journey so mm-hmm. that they actually mean something to each other right mm-hmm. yeah so the, the the and we have to also establish what our alien menace is i was kind of surprised right. maybe you weren't that they did it as early as they did because the very next scene here that we're going to talk about which is they come across a upside down uh a boat a yeah. big boat, like yeah, a steamboat. Yeah, yeah. yeah, steamboat upside yeah. down, like in the middle of the desert, like a four-story one. It's yeah. huge. Yeah, one of those big ones you always see. One of those big, West, like yeah. Mississippi gambling boats. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's upside down. It's raining. And they're like, we're yeah. going to take shelter in it. Yes, it's weird that it's upside down. I was surprised at how quickly we got like a close-up shot of this thing. Mm-hmm. Because I, th- I think they figure, well, this is a two-hour movie. We got to really introduce them because we're yeah. doing a lot of fighting with these i mean I, yeah no for sure mm-hmm. i was, I was into surprised it. yeah yeah i was like oh we're there already because okay. you get to see okay. not only like the face but you get to see like how the whole body operates and that the yeah gross little surprises with this body <laughs> the gross little t-rex arms that yeah. come out of its yeah. chest so its yeah. chest opens up and exposes its heart and Which then, seems like a flaw. Yep. It does, right? but I mean, maybe on their planet. that's how evolution works, you know? Like, uh, 
Yeah. I feel like evolution would have taken care of that. Well, but we're of- not flawless <laughs> beings and we've evolved from something. This is it true, takes time. But our and- heart's on the inside and it's not exposed. <laughs> right. But we still get hurt, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's but got every these day, armor Sean. plates. That's why, <laughs> like, if you're going to be in a movie where there's a lot of gunfight and, they, and bullets bounce off them, but they have yeah. this, like, soft, uh, you know, it opens up, but right. there's a hidden thing next to the heart. There's little gooey chicken feet that come <laughs> out. <laughs> And when I say chicken feet, it's literally three toed. Like they look like little yeah. T Rex hands reaching out Gelatin. for you. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it is gross. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like Jello jigglers. It's like if you made a T Rex out of Jello jigglers. Yeah, it's that's what it is. Real gross. Am I mistaken that the the first time we meet this thing and the uh, you know, there's like uh, that kind of alien three face off between the alien and I think like the kid that's the uh, the the grandson of Keith Carradine's character yeah, yeah. Um, was a like a practical creature at that point. And I think then, so. yeah, because mm-hmm. I mean, it kind of has that. And then a lot of them are uh, later CG as they're right. jumping all yes. over the place. How do you, how, what do the aliens look like aside from the fact that they have this chest area? The Cloverfield monster with like a rounder head. Like yeah. they what have if, like a rounder. What if monsters and aliens look like for the past 10 years, Colin? Yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah. We're in a post Cloverfield society. Yeah. We'll never have a different mm-hmm. alien. They design. run on all fours. They're very fast. They're basically gray. Sometimes they're white. Not yep. in this the one. The one in but... Super 8 looked like that too. Yeah. Yep. And again, like I said, it looks like the, uh, the chita- aliens from Infinity War. The Chitauri. Where, um, yeah, yeah. They look like the Chitauri, too. Yeah. yeah it's just. Yeah. yeah. They do. <laughs> the gray. Like, yeah. well, we used to say gray aliens and that meant something else. Right. Now they're like yeah. these gray bug like yeah. creatures. Usually have like weird like claws or some sort of like bug. Yeah. Like yeah. appendages. Yeah. Yeah. Their behavior is always exactly the same. The sounds yeah. that they make there's is that, always exactly the same. There's that yeah. scene like towards the end of the movie when Daniel Craig is like in the thing and there's like a like a cave behind him and they're all like crawling out. I'm like, that is. Almost exactly like Hawkeye in the cave at the end yeah. of Endgame. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Oh, you've exactly. seen it hundreds of times. Yeah. 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 The swarm of the alien things all running down. I will a, say, yeah, in cavern. 2011, you'd only seen it like 30 times. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of 100. You might have seen it 100. Not 100. Yeah. Yeah. You're very right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's these stop offs. Uh, uh, we, we first meet our alien. There's, uh, I think, Clancy Brown, unfortunately, departs the cast at this point in the movie. Too uh, soon. Too yeah, soon. <laughs> I think we should have kept Clancy Brown. It does give Daniel Craig and Sam Rockwell a good moment together, though. It does. Like, yeah, that's but, for sure. Yeah, it is too soon. It's all, It feels like he's always exiting movies too early, it seems like. Yeah. Well, there's also like a begrudging respect that happens between uh, Daniel Craig and Harrison Ford, right? Because Harrison Ford's like, I want that Lonergan because he stole the gold from my coach or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Because we find out in like, maybe not the next scene, but the scene after that, that Lonergan is actually the head of a, a robber gang. Yeah, he's like Jesse well, James. But yeah. when they run down his crimes, it's not even just robbing. He was charged with killing a prostitute. Right. Like, he's well, just... no, they... That was... That was his false though. Right. That was his girl. Right. But that was like the when they list off all the things he's wanted yes. for, that was one of the things. It is very true. Which right. he didn't actually do, but like but you it was a variety of crimes. Right. Yeah. But also you can't just like, well, the aliens did it. I'm innocent. Like, yeah. You're well, never gonna get rid of that. He was abducted, because that's where we find out he yeah. was abducted. So apparently, right, if I understand this correctly, he was the head of a gang that also included Walt Goggins mm-hmm. uh, as like the second or third uh, mm-hmm. tier guy. And uh he they all conspired to steal gold, which turned out to be Dollar Hyde's gold. They mm-hmm. stole it, but then uh, Craig absconded with the gold because he had met a prostitute that he wanted to get married with, mm-hmm. and they had a, like, they got that, that quintessential Western house in the prairie. Yep. yep. Right? I do have a question, though. Um, so, the prostitute, he falls in love with her, correct? Mm-hmm. She's abducted, taken, killed in space, whatever. Yeah. Burned up. Who... Who is the one that's like going to the police saying that yeah, she's there's missing? There's no body. Like, all oh, right, there's no body. Yeah, there's no body. Yeah, I thought maybe so yeah, you're why right. is he charged with that? Who's Unless her who's reported or missing? Are, are I, deposited back, but they're all well, charred. Right, the aliens burn her up. So at this no, she point, turns to be, ash in yeah, the in the yeah. whoever lived like whoever's in charge of her. For lack of a better haven't phrase. seen her for a while. Yeah, yeah but like, she's already moved away. Habeas corpus. Know must produce the corpse how i feel like in the old sure. west you could just be like you could just point at somebody and be like they did this string them up and hang them and like that's all it takes. <laughs> right everybody's like, like true know, that makes sense that yeah. person would do that yeah, <laughs> yeah. true but who who like, missed her the whorehouse, the whorehouse, that's yeah, what i want to know how's madam clearly yeah. 
it, there was clearly a, maybe this is, is this in the director's cook, Alan? Oh, is there a whore? Is, is there a whorehouse man? My like, best whore's missing. <laughs> you tell me Dolly Parton got cut out of this movie. Yeah. I swear to so God. help me, Colin. That's the only thing missing from this movie is Dolly Parton. That yeah, would be well, I mean, wonderful. God, be I would love Every that. I would love it. that yeah. so much. Mm-hmm. She'd have to do a song though, and I don't know if we're in that kind of tone. It could, what could be at the end of the movie when they're all settled? It was celebrating. She That's could do she another could do another version of Best Little Whorehouse. Yeah, <laughs> or the, or they could have wrote an original Cowboy. Was an alien song and had her sing it. Yes. That would have been amazing. <laughs> yes. Well, there's also uh, so we get a little bit of his backstory, but there's also like we got to have our mid mid movie chase scene, which involves uh, uh, horses on on a top of a canyon chasing a beetle looking mm-hmm. alien ship, and uh, we got to try and rescue Olivia Wilde, who gets kind of abducted, and then there's uh, then she gets killed. We're mm-hmm. like, what? You're killing Olivia Wilde like in the middle of this movie, just like knocking right. people Chris off. Chris Clancy like, now, Olivia. Yeah, no. yeah, and I was, I was really, I was kind of upset because I'm just like, well, what a waste of a fucking actress yeah. in this, yeah. like for, well, for a shit role, and then she dies. And I'm ready to like throw myself in front of Sam Rockwell because yeah. I'm like, no, you can't have him. Like, <laughs> yeah, right? He's ours. Yeah. Don't you touch him? Yeah. But to be fair, for the movie's credit, I was willing to buy that they killed Olivia Wilde's character at that point because I'm like. Yeah, she might have just taken this smallish part because of the people that she would be working with, right? Right, sure. And so I then, would understand that. Yeah. yeah. So then, of course, she comes back. She, she goes Game of Thrones on everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody she, she is a Zora High. She came back to life, no problem. Yeah. She's she's the rightful heir of the the, the Iron Throne, apparently. Obviously. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because the crew is abducted or they're attacked by in, uh, by Apaches that mm-hmm. take them back to their camp, and then there's a big fire, and of course, out of the fire walks. Naked Olivia Wilde. Mm-hmm. It's a PG-13 movie, though, so it's probably yeah, so just a body back. double from just her back. back. Yep. Um, what are we doing here? <laughs> and then she's able to speak with the Apaches, right? And basically say that, like, this man, you need to use your uh, hitherto unknown Apache magic that mm-hmm. will make him remember the gaps in his memory. Uh, well, well, hold on, Kyle. Why does she come back to life? You're, you're skipping over a huge thing here. Yeah. Pretty big part. Yeah. She... It's an alien. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Right, I was right, like, right. are you serious? Yeah. Right I thought now? we talked about that. You yeah. said she was a sexy alien. Well, or yeah. Like well, we glossed <laughs> over it. Yeah. Okay, we glossed right. over we it. We need to deal with this. She, yeah. she yeah. is an alien. Just not the same kind. Right. Different She's from kinds. another planet. Right. Her, her planet got the Alderaan treatment. They Apparently, they came, sucked all the gold out, and destroyed everything. And she was a, a survivor, apparently. Yeah. And she took human form to come kind of like scout them on this planet to see how she can learn how to stop them. Right. And then become our. Uh, exposition machine mm-hmm. is what she becomes for the rest of the movie. Yeah, because she has knowledge that our main yes. characters don't have. She can that, tell you mm-hmm. things about the aliens. Yeah. And she knows Apache. Which I yeah. hate. Yeah. I know just because I hate, I hate how handy. handy. <laughs> I hate that. So handy. <laughs> I hate that. It is very but handy. Whatever. But yeah. like to me that's better than just like her character would have had no purpose if they didn't do this. You know what I'm saying? I don't th- well that's I think that's the flaw. Yeah. You I think, think that's the that problem. they should have characters with no purpose? No no no. I no. think because her this is the only purpose for her character. It's a bad but, purpose for the character. But I think I it retroactively makes everything she did before this make more sense. Because before yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is her po- the point? It of makes her? And, and it definitely makes sense because she makes it clear that she's been working towards this for a long time. Yeah, like she didn't just all of a sudden show up yesterday. Like she's been working towards this mission and like gaining more knowledge for quite a while. Mm-hmm. That's why she knew who he was in the in the first place. Mm-hmm. She's been like following. The activity of these aliens, but even if you so, it makes up sense to, up till this point. Yes, I'm. I'm just saying, like from this point to the rest of the movie, she is. It, it's just there for exposition. She knows. But how the how should to, this better be handled? Well, I'm not saying I know how to handle it better. I've seen it handled better, but she's she's literally only there to give them the information they would not be able to get any other way besides up somebody until, telling them. Well, up until she. You know, saves everyone. Well, yeah, but here's the thing: like, she really doesn't give them any information that they don't get. Like, I mean, you could still have the scene with the like, we're gonna use the thing on his head to you know make him remember, you yeah. know, that he was abducted. This is where they are because that's the next major thing. Yeah. Uh, he could be more of like, you know, they killed my wife, and so I'm gonna blow up the ship at the end. You know, it's like you just change the role to put. So it's like well, she you tells could almost us, take her character she, out of the. She movie. tells us why they're here. She tells us that they can't see well in daylight. This is right. This yeah. is what I'm saying. I I know, but like I'm saying, how else would you convey this information? Well, that I, I think some of the information, like I some of the information I don't think is needed. You just have to go like, huh? Maybe they can't see all that well in the day. You know what I mean? It's like you could deal with it. In the- I, I even, know. I'm just I saying not everyone's that smart that watches I don't movies. Think that Colin. information. <laughs> 
does anything for the movie. You could cut out the they don't see well in daylight movie or line, and I don't think anything. You Sean, could keep while we were the watching the, the movie, movie you fine. were like, "How are they taking these aliens down this well? Because they can't see well in daylight." But even That's that how. scene, well, they were like out in the daylight, running around. You know what I mean? So it's like that. Uh, that even though it's said that they don't see well in daylight, it's never really capitalized on in, in yeah, the they movie because they do fight in the. Daylight. I mean, they kind of get the jump on them a couple times when they're fighting them because well, they this can't is, see well, very well. But this also goes with my other problem. I have a problem with the aliens to begin with. Like, I don't, they, they're not, um, uh, they don't feel like they should be taken down as easily as they are. These feel like hefty aliens. They're tackling horses and dudes and stuff, but when it's they're convenient speedy and they've got armor. Yeah. And well, yeah. And they, when it's convenient, they're able to get like speared through the middle. It seems like they're, I don't know. I don't like them. They're too convenient. They're too easy when they Actually, need I mean, to be. That's a good point that he spears a he dude spears pretty one. easy. Yeah. But like even though it like it repels bullets. Yeah. It's it feels like yeah. they're too easy, but this may be nitpicking, but I, I just don't like them. No, I like I, I agree that there are some problems with the aliens, mm. but I, 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 I think you're picking a lot with Olivia Wilde. I think you're justifying like reasons to get rid of the character when really she doesn't, she, her presence is not offensive. Mm. Like it's not like oh, it, no, it's not, it doesn't hold up the story. I don't think it's but, offensive. Yeah. Well, I guess... This but is, I, I don't have to think it's offensive to, like, not like it. And I also don't think it, you know, doesn't... It doesn't lift or put down the movie. Let's put it that way. Yeah, because I, I guess... It. And this is just me kind of defending the way that I see films in general. So, you know, this is going to ex- either explain a lot of the shit I've said about other <laughs> movies. But I'm always reminded of uh, um, uh, Gene Wilder and Mel uh, Brooks when they were making Young Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Gene Wilder brought the script to Mel Brooks and Mel Brooks started going after every scene. Gene Wilder said, and like going like, why do we need this? Why mm-hmm. do we need this? And so he said, it was like you had pillars and he was swinging a fucking sledgehammer, each one of them. And we were looking for mm-hmm. like so many su- floatable, submersible or non submersible elements. And those were the scenes that made a movie and everything else must go. And I think like, there's a lot of movies that are being made now that have just, a lot of extraneous stuff to pat out a running time or something, but it's like, it doesn't get you to the, you know, narratively through the movie Mm -hmm. with a clean. I mean, I understand that. I feel like movies now definitely over explain things, but I feel like this is not an example. Yeah. I, I I feel like, and not only that, sorry guys, not everyone that watches movies is smart and not everyone that watches movies is adults. So, you know, it might just because we think it's dumb, it might not be dumb to somebody else. Somebody else might need that explanation. Well, we said there was like a, a blatant ADR line later in the movie. <laughs> yeah, where, that's true. Uh, there was. Uh, where Daniel Craig yeah. is in the ca- in the cavern and he sees these, you know, the gold going up these like spindly spiderweb kind of things. He's like, that's how they get the gold out. You know, it's like, well, we're sitting there going, well, yeah, because yeah. we already saw this in your flashback, because mm-hmm. that's why the aliens apparently targeted him and his wife mm-hmm. in the cabin. They had all the gold on the table. Mm-hmm. And they sucked it up through the mm-hmm. sky, and this is how they get the, the gold. But it's like, yeah, that's that explanation to the audience mm-hmm. of, like, this is what mm-hmm. you're looking at. You know? That is the only ADR line I noticed in the movie. So yeah, <laughs> so the rest of them are all good. <laughs> yeah, you know, all that good. one was like, we got to explain mm-hmm. this. So, um... We get a force of uh, different teams because we get the old uh, uh, Lonergan gang. Mm -hmm. We get the Apaches. We get the townsfolk all riding in to attack these aliens and get their people back. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so where do we find these alien creatures? They've got like a mining ship operation that kind of looks like the stone outcroppings in the desert. And it but it goes way underground. And. That's it. They're sucking all the gold out, and that's when Dollar Hut's like, "There is gold here." And you know, in the back of the mind, it, back of his mind, he's thinking, "When the, all this shit's over, I'm coming out here. And I'm oh, yeah. all this gold. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. gold in them hills." Yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. that does seem that just is, like the Velveeta commercial. Right? Yeah, that is how the movie does uh, eventually like mm-hmm. lead to, because that will mean prosperity for the town. It's going to be Cowboys and Aliens too, when they have the railroad and all that stuff. Um, so, <laughs> the gold they found in those hills is the only gold this movie made. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're not getting, we're not getting $74 million. Okay. Um, so this leads us to a big tactical thing where what part of the group's going to le- lure the aliens out. Other uh, folks are going to make an in- incursive, uh, you know, attack into the fortress. Um, Dynamite. With the die, right? Um, so at this point in the movie, you're kind of settling into, now we've gone into the, the aliens section of your Cowboys and Aliens combo. And so you're getting a lot of like caverns, um, dark caverns, 
weird alien, uh, well, not even weird technology. They seem to have like, you know, displays and stuff like that. It's everything that. you've seen before. It's nothing. Which, right. like, but I get it though, because this movie's not trying to reinvent the wheel. This movie's taking things you're familiar with and meshing them together. It's the whole right. point of this movie. Yeah. So I'm not mad at that. Like, yeah, this Western town looked like every Western town yeah. I've seen in a movie before. That's the yeah. point. It's like, that it's like, true. yeah, it's everything you've seen in a Western. It's everything you've seen in Valence, but have you seen them together? Right. Yeah. Because that's what we're doing. That is kind of the yeah. point yeah. of this yeah. movie. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So it's just, yeah. All right. It's a pastiche yeah. movie. That's what, that is literally the point. It yeah. tells you that in the title. Yeah. I don't feel like this movie sold a false bill of goods at all. I think it said what it is and that's what it is. That's very true. It's mm-hmm. cowboys true. and aliens. Mm-hmm. So how does, how do all our heroes get rescue the townspeople who we find are uh, held in a chamber where they're, they've all got cataract eyes and they're staring up into the dead lights. They got to get unplugged. <laughs> it's pretty oh, gross. Because right, they yeah, are still plugged yeah, in. Yeah. 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 Yep. Or like Pandorum too. Yeah. Yeah, so she it. shoots yeah. out the light and unplugs them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, well, okay, yeah. So, I mean, so all of our characters and our primary main characters, right? We've got Dollarhide, Lonergan, and, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Ella. Ella, Ella. Was Ella. Ella. Okay. So, um, we've got, uh, Lonergan has to, well, he's looking for his wife, right? Who's in this, and he has to also, like, uh, regain his memory completely about what happened, and he has to come face to face with the fucking alien that tried to dissect him. Well, he's not looking for his wife. He saw her die. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 He knows he's just you. there on a selfless he mission. Just wants to, like, to, yeah, he just wants to save these people. Because he couldn't save her, so he has to save everyone else. Not going to lie, that part at the end where everyone is like being reunited with their loved ones and he has no one made me a little sad. It made me really sad. It made me really fucking sad. I was we like, don't give the hero kind of what he wants at the end like yeah. he doesn't get it no he's alone and that's what it was kind of sad. it was really fucking sad yeah yeah because his other potential love interest is ella the uh olivia wilde character she is going to uh well when the the alien ship eventually once mm-hmm. everybody's off of it right it's going to launch into space and she's going to blow it up mm-hmm. with uh i guess his bracelet also turns, yep. into, it turns a, into a, a predator bomb, predator bomb. Mm-hmm. right she knows how this <laughs> works because she's an alien right um <laughs> So, the, yeah, because there was a couple scenes where they were trying to imply sexual tension between the two of them. Um, I was like, okay, is this going to be like a relationship, the re- replacement for his dead wife? I don't know what they were going for. But uh, he that doesn't happen. So, yeah, he's alone. I kind of wish, the wish end, they would. They, and they've done a sex scene where she can't keep her human form in the middle of it. And she keeps kind of like changing into her alien version. Like, yeah. I think that'd be funny. Are you having species flashbacks yeah, right now? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of you. funny where he's just like, whoa! He That's didn't not know. this movie. Uh, I, I know it's not yeah. the movie, yeah. There I, is, that movie exists out there somewhere, I, but this is not that movie. I like that they don't fall into a trope of giving him like a love interest it replacement wife. Nice. I, I yeah. like As sad as it is that he's alone, I also kind of like it because yeah. now he can have a fresh start and go do whatever he yeah, wants. I agree, like, yeah. I wasn't sure who Harrison Ford was talking about when he said don't worry she's in a better place he's talking about his wife or i we'll assume his wife uh, i think he was talking olivia about ella i think olivia yeah, Wild, yeah. yeah. and that's that's the one he knew of that he had feelings but he didn't really know anything about his wife and that's so the the hair and the harrison ford character his closure is his son's not an asshole anymore. yeah his son's not <laughs> yeah, an asshole anymore like, oh. the amnesia made him a completely malleable person apparently and <laughs> yeah. you can well, just make him into the son you want him to be he loses the uh the adam <laughs> my adam control Beach. has yeah. its uh advantages yeah, yeah which <laughs> we get like a tearful scene where it's like you know you're the son i wish i always had you know which like music. harrison ford about to cry always makes me so sad like he's like it was clearly a menthol stick but like his yeah. eyes were real teary eyed and red for a scene there, and I was like, "Oh, I don't want to see this. This uh, yeah. makes yeah. me so and sad." Considering who Harrison Ford is and his grumpy, gruff self, mm-hmm. like to see yeah. him squirting tears, like, "Oh no, don't do that." Yeah, Harrison Ford. I don't like, like we want it. you to be like, okay. If you're gonna cry, then I'm gonna cry. <laughs> right. and we're all gonna cry. No. Yeah. Does the movie? Colin's not gonna cry. No, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> this soft. Well, does the movie give like? Because uh, I guess you know, uh, you know, when you're when you have a movie with uh, Daniel Craig and Harrison Ford, mm-hmm. and they're at odds, it's generally like, well, one guy's the the good guy, the mm-hmm. white knight, and the the black knight, right? Mm-hmm. So if Harrison Ford is the bad guy, because when we're introduced to him, he has a black cat, Colin. He has a black cat at first, and yeah. then he loses it. Yeah. Black yeah. hat, hat, black oh, I hat. Said cat. No. I'm like, he has a black hat. He gets it from the, the the three people he shoots in the beginning, and he wears it up until the river scene with Olivia Wilde, and that's when he leaves it behind. It's a turning point for the character in the movie. It is, yeah. 
And that's mm-hmm. what symbolism. So Favreau put yeah. in the time. <laughs> I guess I gotta watch this again. Yeah. And they're trying to, you know, like you know, I guess redeem that character by the end of it, mm-hmm. so that because he does have a relationship with the uh, the grandson, right, of uh, uh, Keith Carradine. Mm-hmm. So there's like a thing with the you, know, you got this knife, and you know I'm gonna, you know, you're hungry. I'll give you an apple yeah. or whatever. Um, so yeah, by the end of it, I guess are we coming around to like, no, oh, Harrison Ford's an okay guy too, even though he's going to take this like total asshole kid and make it dollar hide and son, and they're going to run this cattle industry or whatever the because now they've got the gold, right? right. Well, mm-hmm. When they said the railroad industry is going to change the cattle industry, which it did, it killed the cowboy. So, which like, there's your sequel set up right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into it. <laughs> it's a railroad movie. Well, I guess we <laughs> they should have just. Again, uh, in our continuing series of adding one scene that will connect two movies, mm-hmm. I say we wild, wild west this shit and just get a big giant spider and then one goes over the other. Because <laughs> they're building the railroads in that. Oh, no, I would hate that. <laughs> uh, they do. I guess we can't have a sequel because none of the aliens ever escaped uh, because she blew the thing up in a very challenger like explosion. It was. But, if they, it was. but if they were the scouting ones, yeah, wouldn't like, the home world ones know? Yeah, yeah, they're, like, so, they're just looking down with binoculars like. Fuck. I was gonna, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. they're just a search team. Yeah. There's more of them out there. Yeah, and I suppose they can't, like, you know, like, eat gold. You actually have to physically take there. You oh. can't, like, send the signal. Or you could say, we found it here. I suppose yeah. you could do that. Unfortunately, Super 8 is our version with the railroad. That movie's way too much about a train car. Holy shit. That's true. I don't want to watch that movie again. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of good stuff in that movie. There is. But yeah, that's unfortunately, I think great. all of us like think negatively on it. The because... child actors were wonderful. Yeah, in that movie. yeah. I know. In a, in, in, yeah, definitely. I'll give them that. It's the they treatment were of its alien. But that's a story for another podcast. Yeah, I'm sure it'll make it here eventually. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess that brings us to the end of uh, Cowboys and Aliens, unless there's any other stray observations out there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to read some of your mail. And to do that, we're, and then we're, we'll tell you what we thought of the movie. But to do that, we're going to need our mailman. His name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Would he be black hat or white hat? Is Ooh. he a good guy or a bad guy? Is he a brown hat in the like, middle? Yeah, in the middle. He's... Yeah. I was going to say he's a black hat, but he's uh, maybe. The drunk. <laughs> the town drunk. Who wants to. Played by Elijah quit Cook drinking. Jr. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Who's, who wants to prove himself. Does he have a jug up, with two, bra- two X's on it? Well, sure. That's how, that's how you see him at the beginning of the movie, but he eventually wants to prove himself and he dies and it's sad. I, you know, <laughs> Sorry, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe Sam Rockwell is just such a great bartender that like he cut off the town drunk and he's like, no, I'm not going to have this mess I like, in my I like establishment. Th- I like to think that Sam Rockwell made the town sober. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He survives uh, the movie. There you go. Yes. <laughs> you don't have to worry. Okay. So uh, anyway, we got to remind you how you can participate in this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash I am Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Sat Freak Show. Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Dave Johnson writes in and says, I discovered the Freak Show this year, and I've been listening to one episode after another. It's been so great. I think maybe now I need to make your watch list my watch list. I swear Michaela is my spirit animal because every movie she (laughs) picks is one I like. You're all really great, and it's a joy to binge episodes of movies I've seen to get your takes on them. Keep doing what you're doing, and a special hello to Igor. Aww, Aww, thanks. Thanks. Igor That's appreciate so the shout out. Igor, Igor will appreciate it. He that. brings all these letters and then never gets any shout out. So That's true. Igor! <laughs> <laughs> uh, We're gonna um, put that on the fridge for him. Yes. There you go. <laughs> he'll, he'll see it. Next to his drawings. Uh so <laughs> about tonight's episode, Cowboys and Aliens, uh MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, mm-hmm. says that uh we have inducted a actor in this movie in, onto the Saturday Night Freak. It's not Walt Goggins. It is Sam Rockwell. Huh? Yes! Yay! About time! Yes! Yay! Great addition, great addition. Yeah, and but it should have happened a long time ago. For what? The, the movies are kind of surprising. Well, obviously, he was in Cowboys and Aliens, but he was also in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He was. Mm. He was the head thug he's, in that. He's the guy who goes, regular? 
from Mental. <laughs> oh, the original, 1991. Wow. And he was also in Celebrity, the Woody Allen movie, which oh, we wow. also oh, covered geez. on this show. Right. The Woody Allen era. There's so the many other <laughs> better Sam Rockwell movies we could have brought to the Freak Show. I know, where's whatever. Poltergeist? Okay. Yeah, anyway. the Poltergeist oh. remake uh, <laughs> or, or Moon. Moon. Yeah, yeah Moon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay, so about Cowboys and Aliens, Matthew Pearson writes in and says, I saw this one in the theater with my dad, who loves old westerns. For the next six or seven years before he passed, he would talk about how when it was on TV and he would watch it again and again, and he has good memories. Oh, I love how parents get stuck in a loop with movies like <laughs> that. I, I, I'm sure I, I will reach that stage if I haven't already. But like, Oh, I have. I yeah. watch the same shit over yeah. and over. <laughs> <laughs> that one's a good one. Just, yeah. Uh, Simon Carter says, one question. Why wasn't this better? All the ingredients were there. I just don't get it. It's not a bad movie, just a way more forgettable than its title. That's there's my review right there. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Spirit Animal. Uh Travis Legler, speaking of, says uh, so of and, Spirit Animal. <laughs> uh so an old West, Travis says so an old West version of Cranky Mean Indiana Jones me, meets mysterious James Bond. It's an okay movie, not the worst, but I know it never left a lasting impression on me. I've seen it about four times, and I always have to really think, have I seen this before when I watch it again? I hope you guys enjoy it more than I have in the past. Yeah, Colin and I had both seen this before, but we forgot different parts. <laughs> so between the two of us, we could patch yeah, together maybe. a whole movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, DJ Dog Manfish writes in and says, uh, <laughs> what was the minute mark in the movie that each of you lost the will to live? Ooh, that's well, we're, sa- we're saving that. Wow. For I was gonna, I, well, no, I can answer this question. It's not the will to live. That's, it's like, not that's, that that's bad harsh. of a movie. That's very yeah. harsh. No. Um, I think it was the, when we got to the boat, I think that's when it started to. That was very uh, early in the movie. That was very early in the movie. <laughs> wow. That was the first pit stop on the road I, well, trip. I think when, I, when we hit the first pit stop, I'm like, it's going to happen a lot. That of was the beginning of act two. That yeah. was, that was that early. That's why I lost. <laughs> <That was early. laughs> uh, yeah, because, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, B movie B movie poster vault says in the wise word of my ludicrous, ludicrously specific podcast co-host Darren, this movie left me whelmed. Not yeah. terrible, <laughs> not mind blowing. Just the middle of the dusty trail chunk of a movie. Literally, have never had any thoughts of going back and rewatching it. So it'll be interested to see what the assembled freaks have to say about it. P.S. Don't let Igor play with the wrist blaster. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> that's that damn be, fine advice, right yeah. there. That'd be like uh, what's that one movie that was on like YouTube where they all got different parts of the spacesuit and the one guy got the blaster. I don't watch movies that are on YouTube, Sean. <laughs> they were they were like a group. I don't know. Oh. Well, that's a you thing. I guess so. Um, YouTube's not my thing. <laughs> last week we watched uh, the 007 feature Moonraker. Grant Parrish writes in and he says, "I'm going to compare you guys to the Golden Girls again, but <laughs> there is just this beautifully perfect alchemy when all four of you are together and talking about a movie that." Chef's kiss. <laughs> it can be. T- it can't be topped. Oh, thank you. There you go. You got to do the hand. <laughs> I got it. So mm-hmm. I will yeah. say I do like. I mean, I didn't mind doing the freak show at home, but I enjoy it much more. Oh, oh yeah. for sure. This for way, sure. you should do yeah. everything in real life. Well, yeah, okay. ideally, it'd be nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, I'm gonna quote. You should do everything in real life. I, yeah. I agree. No. Uh, Andrew Bradford writes in and says, "Disclaimer: This is my favorite Bond movie, followed followed by For Your Eyes Only and You Only Live Twice. A fantastically fun movie in the Roger Moore era of Bond films. The score, the sequencing, and the pacing, and the overall size of the movie, which takes us to U.S., Brazil, Italy, and outer space, right. makes it all the more enjoyable. I hope y'all enjoy this fun entry." Of the Bond franchise. It yeah. was great. It was fun. It was very fun. Yeah. Uh, Brett Williams wants to know, is this because Black Widow was watching Moonraker in her new movie? Happy accident. I still haven't seen Black Widow. <laughs> she Colin, Moonraker. Colin was the one that brought it up. I was like, no shit. Yeah. We had recorded our episode and then saw that scene. So we like to think that, you know, they watched it because. It's still we, relevant. I mean, we, well, this we is very true. Yes. Yeah. They. They heard us. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, like, there was some other movie she was watching, and they're like, we got to change this out digitally real so quick. So we came out the same week, right? Is that it was Black Widow and so. our Moonraker episode? I feel Bam. like Kismet was it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, the week before that, we watched a movie called Species, and Artie sixty four one zero nine says, "I own all the Species movies on oh. DVD because I bought them from a Hastings store when it was closing down, and I was excited to rewatch thanks to you all." Hey, you're- <laughs> I have a number of 
DVDs in my collection that are Hollywood video ones from when they closed. I got a couple of those, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because we're saying there's four of those movies, right? Yes, all four. four. Uh, Terry Fire 666 says, I saw this movie once. I'm not a big fan out of, of it, but still, it's not a bad film. Yeah. Yep. All right, you can go back and listen to our episode, mm-hmm. find out what we thought of it. Apple Leva says, you should try Under the Skin with Scarlett Johansson. It's a surreal and haunting tale of incognito alien life on Earth. It's, it's, a, also, good, it's a good movie. Uh, yeah, because there's it's like a, a seduction thing going on there. She's seducing guys. The way it's filmed makes me a little nauseous sometimes. There's a lot of handheld camera. Oh, movement, I don't like that. So I can't do that. Uh, Sander Antonides says the enigma of species. It got a much better cast than it arguably deserved, yet emerged greater than the sum of its parts. Definitely. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, I'm a parent with two kids, and I, too, notice the lack of movies for adults. The best we wind up with are, lately are cheesy romance based off Nicholas Spark novels, and if I'm, I'm and I've threatened straight up to arson the theater if I have to go to one of those ag- again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gl- I'm, I'm glad that people with children are also recognizing there's nothing for them either. Yeah. Like Ugh, Nicholas Spark's not. Uh, Bishaw Foolery says, Michaela almost made me skip ahead. But then she made a valid damn point. Mainstream cinematic theater releases hardly display dongs or bush yeah. in strictly clinical terms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, you should all go see Zola. <laughs> 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 that, that movie will surprise you. All right, then. Okay, so that, that, is the, that, is, well, that is the adult I, movie you, we've been talking about. Thank you for that glowing I, recommendation, Sean. Sean, you're welcome. I feel like the Zola marketing people have incepted you or something. They have. Because you're I, the only person who knows anything about I this I have movie. never I, heard I of this movie. I must be, because I watched the ad one time on like Facebook or Instagram or something. I'm like, oh, that looks pretty fun. And then for the next two months... That's all there was. I've, I've not seen a never, single ad. No, I've never heard they of They found movie. the one person who was looking at the ad, apparently, and they're like, we got a key market on this guy. When it's you were like, have you guys heard technology. that movie Zola? I was like, no, I've literally never heard of this movie. <laughs> I don't know what you're well, talking about. Well, it's not in theaters anymore, so wait for it to come out, but definitely see it. All right. Well, speaking of surprises, we're going to find out now uh, what we thought of tonight's movie, starting with Sean. I'm going first. <laughs> <laughs> um... Uh, I mean, I think I think we all pretty much nailed it today. It's not, um, it's not an offensive movie. Mm-hmm. I will agree with that. You're right. This is not an offensive movie. Um, this movie, this is more me than this movie, probably. But when it comes to like we were talking about, like you said, pastiche movie, it's taking all the things you already know about these two things and putting them together, and that is the movie. So what I'm bringing to the movie is just. Being tired of seeing that stuff, I think. I don't know. This movie did not. I'm whelmed. I mean, everybody who everybody who wrote in pretty much nailed it. It's it's like right in the middle for me. I don't I don't care at the end of the day. Like man, I, it's there's some good parts to it. Um, we don't get enough westerns, but I don't. know. The cast is stacked and pretty great. There's some good moments, but man. It seems like I'm tired of the the fights with big gray aliens where I don't know what's going on. And I know none of them are going to like mostly none of them are going to die. I know Harrison Ford is not going to die in this movie. I know Daniel Craig's not going to die in this movie. There's just I don't know. No stakes in it. I don't know. It's just not it's not for me. So I'm going to pass on Cowboys and Aliens. Um, I also don't think this movie needs to be two hours long, like and especially a two hour and 15 minute other cut. Ah, not nah, too long. I think. Uh, I think there's a there's a better movie in there somewhere. Again, not offensive, just not for me. So I pass on Cowboys and Aliens. Uh, ooh. Holly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, am I picking Holly? Or? No, Holly. <laughs> um, I th- okay. So the obviously, Sean, this was your first time watching it. Yes. Also, my first time watching it. Um, and I think I like its reputation had just set the bar really low for me. I thought this was going to be a really terrible movie. Just from what I've heard about it. So I think from that, I was like, this movie's actually not bad. Like, Mm -hmm. it's really not. And I think because of that, I was like, you know what? I kind of liked it because I just expected it to not be as tolerable as it was. Um, So, yeah. Thank God for Sam Rockwell. (laughs) You're right. (laughs) Man is a treasure. I love Sam Rockwell. Love that man. (laughs) And Clancy. Come on. Yeah. We don't get enough Clancy. The cast was good. And to see all these people you love together. Yes. It was stacked. And that was definitely like, that's the biggest draw of this movie for sure. I, Sean, I agree with you. We've seen all this stuff done. It's nothing new and it's nothing. It, it should have been more exciting to see Cowboys and Aliens. And it just, it wasn't as exciting. Um, 
But again, not offensive. I think I'm probably going to forget this movie pretty quickly. But that being said, my experience with it was not a negative experience. Um, it was... It, it was, was more, it was, yeah, it, it, was, it was, it was, it was more palatable than, yeah, definitely more palatable than I, I was expecting. So yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's decent. I would say, I'd say I recommend it. I'm going to forget it, but I recommend it. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> to be fair, we forget everything yeah, we watch that on this. That is true. Yeah, yeah. That is yeah, true. There are a few yeah. movies where I'm like, we watch that? <laughs> yeah. I forget every fucking thing we watch. It's yeah. For it's, real. It's gone. At least I'm acknowledging that this one I definitely will forget. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> but I liked it. And I was, I'm okay with it. I will recommend it. Colin, what did you think? Well, uh, I mean, the, uh, I think it's settled with, I, I thought that the title is not representative of, I know you're saying the subject matter, but the tone, I guess, of just saying cowboys and aliens, that kind of like set me up for, I guess, uh, 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 a sci-fi channel movie. And I was shocked when I watched this movie and the first act is like an honest to God fucking movie. You know, it's got, it's like, this is a, classic hollywood western it's really good and uh it's unfortunate i think sean yeah it was a i think the when they get to the boat was when i realized that i'm like okay i'm starting to to disengage a little bit it's like we set everything up and now we're heading out on the trail and now we're gonna encounter a bunch of things and you know whatever Mm. to try and get there and so it was, yeah, the interest level, once you get to like, oh, we're chasing the big alien space bug on the horse and jumping and, you know, I don't know, that stuff doesn't work on me the same way that it used to. And again, I realize that this is old man Colin talking. Yeah. So, you know, I, I am aware that this may work better depending on what you've seen before. Um, but it does feel like, uh, I mean, I thought actually if I was going to pinpoint it, it was when when Keith Carradine went out of the movie. Uh-huh. It was like, because I liked that character. Yeah. And then it was like, boom, he's gone. I'm like, oh, that kind of sucks because it would have been interesting to have him and Daniel Craig and, and even, Harrison and Ford. Even maybe you know? Paul Dano. Like they, they, it's like they sucked up all the really interesting characters. Yeah. It, well, yeah. Yeah. Because, well, I mean, I get it for the. I don't the think I could watch of... two hours of Paul Dano like that. I really don't. But, Agreed. Well, Agreed. If, if there was a turn, Agreed. if there was a turn and they all started being like more so telling him to shut up and like punching him. And yeah. Being... Well, you can't sustain that for True. You know, two hours. Right. I mean, it would have been he at least you figure would have introduced like a wild card element to the yeah. to the group or whatever but you know whatever it it is what it is i feel um, like we already have aliens we don't need a more of a wild card right yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah um i uh yeah i mean by the time it got to because i guess the next thing that like it was like well there's the boat which to be honest the 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 second time i watched the movie i forgot the boat uh this time i forgot enough you know like the it's like that whole middle sec the second act is like i you are not gonna recall this in a week like <laughs> And then what? Ha- well, I mean, we might because we talked about it. But right. I mean, after you watch it, you go like, huh? And then I remember that it. I remember Olivia Wilde comes out of a fire. And then I it's remembered like, that, too. But I didn't remember why she came yeah, out of a fire. But I don't have like a, I don't have a positive connotation with it. It's like no. uh, she's an alien. That OK, whatever, you know. And then then the end is a big fight around this, uh, you know, uh, uh, plateau looking or whatever. Uh, Monument Valley alien looking spaceship. And we get. Then you're into, I know what you're saying, that like the end uh, has all the stuff that you expect of a sci-fi movie, and the beginning has everything you expect of a Western, but I guess what appealed to me about the Western side was it, of it was the character work. It's like, I really was kind of getting into the the, the connections mm-hmm. between those people and liked it, and then the end, the sci-fi thing is going to be primarily action, and it's just unfortunate, you know, it's like, this is what... Uh, the genre will do mm-hmm. is action becomes choreographed stuff with computerized things like jumping out and we're in caves and people shooting and things and it's like okay i've seen this before and you're really not doing anything uh terribly exciting actually i was actually thinking that that there's there's explosions and people running around shouting it and i'm like they think it's exciting but i'm not i'm not feeling the excitement yeah. out of it so i think unfortunately i know there's a lot of people worked really hard on this movie and you know it, it, it's a awesome chance to see especially harrison ford in a western which mm-hmm. was like you know fuck mm-hmm. this guy should have been in more what's the closest thing a witness i don't even know it was uh, an homage yeah, wait, yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely hollywood <laughs> homicide i would say <laughs> yeah um uh so yeah i think i gotta i gotta pay I'm like, i guess i wouldn't recommend that you actually check it out so mikhail um uh, yeah we talk about we've talked about in the past favreau and how we feel about him mm-hmm. and 
um, and how you know, we said you need to put respect on his name because he does great work and like he doesn't stir up trouble. People seem to really like working with him. Actors yeah. continuously go back to work with him, so mm-hmm. he must treat them well. Um, I think, like I said, our end of the year wrap ups where we talk about the Mandalorian, we talk in depth about Favreau quite a bit. Um, and I know I think I talked about on one of those how I had been at two events where he was a keynote speaker mm-hmm. and like he's just passionate about everything. He's kind of doing that Samuel L. Jackson thing where he's making the movies he wanted to make as a kid. Like mm-hmm. and I, I have a lot of respect for that. And he did talk about how disappointed he was and how this movie was received and how he felt like people didn't pick up on the themes he was like expanding on and mm-hmm. the kind of tropes that he was twisting and things like that. And, you know, I I think. I am disappointed that people didn't receive it that way yeah. too. I feel like, and I, I get the sense with Favreau. He's not setting out to just make a movie. He's trying to create a like childhood experience that you will be nostalgic for as an adult. Mm-hmm. He's creating family traditions, not movies. Think about all the stuff he's made recently. The Lion King movie, the jungle book movie, elf people watch elf every fucking Christmas. Mm-hmm. Favreau is in the business of making family traditions, not movies. So I think when you start to realize that's what his career is, all of his choices make a lot more sense. Mm. There's a reason why this is PG-13 and not R-rated. It needs to be a family movie that you can watch together. Mm. But with Chef, though, that was like his cry to like, I got to hang on to this. Like, well, I mean, Swingers isn't that either. Yeah, he like, has he's once st- every once in a while. He's still a filmmaker. I think, yeah. I think yeah. Chef is just the, like, food. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think, I think that's it. Like, yeah. I think, like. I think he noticed that like yeah. everybody loves it. Like everybody loves food. He Foodie. makes very I'm gonna make it, movie, you, right, right, I'm gonna yeah. make it look fucking good. Have you, have you guys watched the Chef show? Yeah, because uh, I, I, I had to watch Gwyneth argue with him about being in Spider Man. Uh, I, <laughs> I I skipped the Gwyneth the Gwyneth episode, <laughs> yeah. but the rest of them like I love the Chef show. Yeah, yeah Favreau's great. a great guy. He seems like a good dude too. And like I, he might not be making the most unique work, but he's making solid, good, consistent work. Mm-hmm. So. Did he was he the Dinner for Five? Did he start that? I think so. Yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. That? yeah. 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 Those were fucking great. Yeah. Like he is. He's a fantastic showrunner for the Mandalorian. He righted mm-hmm. the sinking Star Wars ship. Yeah. Like he did. For respect sure. this man. John Favreau does good things. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, when this movie came out, I felt like I lived on a different planet because everyone was like, oh, I didn't care for it. I'm like, it was cowboys. It was aliens. It was <laughs> all these people you love. What's not to love about it? Michaela flips around the board. She's like, I'm just French like, <laughs> yeah. Aliens. And like, cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> I agree it's a little over long. I agree it sags in the middle. It does mm-hmm. take side quests. It doesn't need to. But I like being in this Western environment so much, especially mm-hmm. with these kind of stars. I'm okay with like letting that wash over me and it take its time because I yeah. like I'm gonna go home and get stoned and play Red Dead Redemption 2 because <laughs> I want more of this like atmosphere, you yeah. know? So I like I I we were saying when we were watching this, I would kill to have been an extra and just sit and watch these amazing actors that I all love interact yeah. together in a Western. Like yeah. I would have loved, I want to go to the real West world. I want to do all this stuff. So it is like catnip for me. So mm-hmm. I love it. You know, um, it does have its problems. It is tropey. I think something to keep in mind with you, Sean and Holly is that you guys are watching it from a 2021 perspective. Well, I, mean, mm-hmm. I saw this so. in theaters when it came out, mm-hmm. it, these tropes were not as tired Ten years I mean, ago that, as they that are is, now. That's when I said, like a lot of this is more me than the yeah. movie It's just because we're so, past yeah, this and right. we've seen a lot since then. So and yes. I was like, yeah. in this context, I'm like, I'm okay with all of it because mm-hmm. I actually kind of liked it. Yeah, it's, yeah. In, I mean, they were still tropes, but they weren't as tired as in 2011 yeah. as oh, they yeah. are now. So I think I would recommend it because it is competently made. It's beautiful. It's expensive. It has mm-hmm. all these stars in it. It does sag a little. It does get boring. It'd be a great hangover like Sunday afternoon you're folding your laundry movie because you go you go ahead and get up and grab your laundry and come back upstairs. You'll be fine. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know. Oh, they're still fighting that alien. But, oh, great. <laughs> yeah. But I do think you should watch it. It's like, it's not like lose the will to live bad. No, like one it's, of our listeners yeah, that's, that's an severe. exaggeration. Yeah. We've watched some yeah. bad shit on this oh, yeah. podcast. Oh, yeah. This is nowhere near the worst. That's why that comment, I was like, I didn't have a no will to live moment like yeah yeah so. i got it got a little slow but mm-hmm. like i said when you're <laughs> how lucky were we in the first 10 minutes to have sam rockwell clancy brown and daniel craig all interacting yeah. with each other in the first five minutes I was like of movie. In, in one shot yeah, yeah. that was pretty delightful great. like so i'll take it you know yeah. it's not perfect but i'll take it so i definitely recommend cowboys all right Okay, so next week, and thank you for uh, sticking with us. Next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Colin. Give it 
I hear that? I don't know. Colin! <laughs> <laughs> what shall we be watching next week? All right, next week uh, we're going to... Well, I was going to say this is like topical because it's headlines all over the country, oh, no. but oh. I don't think that... Uh, Volcano. Uh, no. no. There's a lot of grizzly bear attacks, so that means we're going to have to go back and watch the original The Jaws with Claws. <laughs> Woo! Grizzly? Grizzly. Yeah, that's right. right. From the director Jaws of the Manitou. Claws. So there I you go. I feel like we've oh, been we threatening go. this one for I know, a while. I know. Yeah. I know. We have. <laughs> it's been on my list for years, so. Yeah. Well, it just came out on Blu-ray, so God damn it, we're going to do it. <laughs> there we go. Grizzly. Okay, so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, the basement is going dark.